This exhibition focuses on the Forte University art collection and the artists in the collection are from artists that were working between the periods of 1970 and 1990. The mediums range from paintings to sculptures to prints and they speak about the time in which these artworks were created. Um, for example, lino cut is very popular because black artists used it as it was more affordable and also because they could make multiples. So the sculptural works, for example, are also kind of, they've put, been put in the exhibition to show the versatility of the artist and to show how they move between two different mediums. So one artist might be very good at pastel artworks on paper, um, but also be well versed in sculpture. The overall arching theme is around modernism and this idea of modernity and whether or not black artists in their expressive modes contributed to this idea of modernism. And then within that, there are other kind of sub-themes that I took from the artworks themselves. For example, there is black theology, there are works that are influenced by black consciousness, there are works that kind of reference the township, there are works that look at mythology and spirituality. So those are the kind of different um, ideas that came through in, in the works. One of the themes in this show that are, I brought out from the works was the, the theme around works that are inspired by the township. And again, in, in selecting which works would go into this, I deliberately chose works that were kind of challenging the notion of the township. They were much more, you know, colorful, they were vibrant. Again, kind of talking about how the township itself is, even though it's a place of despair and there's a lot of poverty, it is a place where there are happy memories. Well, there are two objectives to this exhibition. The first was to firstly show this collection and to show it to a wider audience. This is the first time it's being shown out of the Eastern Cape since the 1990s. So it is kind of reaching out to a much more wider and broader audience. So this, in a sense, is exposing the, these artists. The second one is to look at, again, where do these artists sit or where are they situated within art history? and art, the art historical narrative in, in the South Africa cultural landscape. And it's a way of kind of debating and saying, well, where are, where, how do we discuss these artists? Ernest Mangoba is a key figure in this exhibition. He studied at Fort Hare University um, since in 1938, and then he moved to Paris to study further. Um, there he got caught in the Second World War where he ended up in a, in a German concentration camp and he subsequently met his wife, Sonia, who is a Danish woman and after the war they were released and they moved to Denmark and joined a group of artists um, in a collective called the Cobra. Um, and he died in Paris at the age of 98 and he was painting um, right up until then. Dumila Feni is also another prolific artist in this exhibition. And it's because Demile was, um, he also lived overseas. So he started off in South Africa and then as things became difficult during apartheid, he then moved to, to London first and then moved to the US where he died. But what was prolific about Dumile Feni is that he came up with this almost like an art language and a language to speak about pain and suffering and trauma. It's very difficult to make something as simple as charcoal and paper express an emotion like that. And Dubile was one person or one artist that was able to do that very, very successfully in a way in which that speaks about the relationship between the victim and the perpetrator. What I'm hoping that audiences will take away from this exhibition is that it will give us a moment to reflect, to reflect upon the artworks themselves, but to reflect upon what the artworks are showing us about where we come from, where we are, and most importantly, where we are going. Mm -hmm.